Welcome to Master Gardening. I'm your host, Bud Kwok, and we're here today at the University of Kentucky's McCracken County Extension Office. We're here with the Master Gardeners, and they're putting on another one of their toolbox garden programs, making beeswax candles. Beeswax candles are the most expensive and by far the best candle you can buy. Why is that? Well, stay tuned. We'll find out tonight. We're going to get started. I'm going to do the, some hot wax pouring. And I just checked, yeah, my, my wax is melted. Thank heavens, I didn't even look at it. <laughs> it's bad. Um, so we're going to pour some wax, and then we're going to do some rolling later. We've got sheets of, of, uh, of um, wax for everybody, and I cut up a bunch of wicks, and we'll, we'll go get into that later and talk about different techniques you can use. And I'll bet that some of you have already done some of this. And if you did, I'm going to ask you to say, hey, what are the techniques can we do with the, with the rolled wax? First thing we're going to do is skip the whole program and go to the end. <laughs> okay, because it takes a while for the, the wax to set up. So I'm going to pour the wax now. And then we'll go back and start from the beginning and, 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 and lead up to pulling the candles out and, and passing them. <laughs> okay, and this is very hot, and move it to number two. This is a very satisfying, one of my, I, I raise bees, I do a lot of gardening, I make homemade wine, but this is probably the most satisfying hobby I have. Um, what do you say? No, uh, we'll talk about Chuck and his, uh, his mother-in-law, Annie Broyles, who owns the bee barn. Uh, that's, where, that's where all this wax came from. You're gonna, you're not, I'll tell you about some other places to get, uh, get, your, get, your, get your set up. And I'm not doing a very good job that right now. You guys got me all nervous. You'll see up there at the top, this is my setup. And it's taken me quite a few years to get everything the way I wanted it. And you can get one of these. This is, this is, it comes uh, with, with, the, with the equipment. I got all my stuff from Better Bee. I've got a couple catalogs up here. Here's an old one, here's a brand new one. And the back third of the catalog is all about making beeswax candles. You can put colors in it. Uh, I don't like to do that. I love the, uh, the yellow, and I, I also ha love the, the bleached. There's a bleached, which is perfectly white, and those are really beautiful, too. Here's what the, this looks like at the top. This is what I'm looking at while I'm pouring. If you'll see, the wick is, is, goes right down the middle. It comes in from the bottom, and by the way, the, the top part of the candles are down here. These are the bottom of the candles up the top. But see that the wicks come in from the bottom, and I've got a, a straight pin that goes through that and holds it tight. You put it in the middle, and then you pull the, the wick from the bottom to make it tight, so it's straight down the middle of the candle all the way. On other ones, they're too big for my little pins, but you can use a pencil. I've got toothpicks that you can put through there to make sure that, that that wick is dead center. Now this thing I'm using to pour, this is really actually made for this. And it's really a good one. I used to use, well, I'm making a mess, guys. <laughs> I haven't done this probably in a few years. And for some reason, I think I might even be older than I used to be. <laughs> As you pour these, they'll shrink. So right now, these other ones that I already poured, they've shrunk down a little bit. I'm going to fill them back in. And 
and this is what I'm doing, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty understandable. It takes about 30 minutes for these tapers, and I like tapers the best, about 30 minutes for the tapers to solidify. And like I said, this is the bottom of the taper, so it, it, it doesn't have to be pretty. And you can make a mold out of almost anything. You've got these little metal things for the bottom that you stick in the bottom of the, of the, of the mold. It's got a place for the wick to go through, and then you smash it, and it'll hold onto the wick, and then you can put it in the bottom just like this. And put, make a, a voltive. Well, that <laughs> never mind about that. Okay, there's, there's another one right here. This is one of my favorites. This is the shape of a beehive. Okay, so you can't tell by the bottom. This is the bottom up here on the, on the other side is, is a beehive, and we'll look at that at the end too. Okay, we won't look at that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put it over here. <coughs> so we've got that done, now we can go ahead and get on with the program. Here we are. Okay, we're going back 5,000 years. That's the first time that we have recorded that candles were in use. Not beeswax, just candles. I'm sure it went back farther than that, but you can't, we, nobody can really prove it, so it's about 5,000 years. The Han Dynasty is the first time that beeswax candles, we have records that they, they started making beeswax candles. And then the Jin Dynasty also. The Catholic Church played a really big part in uh, the beeswax candles. And you'll find out pretty soon why they were extremely uh, expensive, extremely expensive. The only people that could, could use beeswax candles were extremely rich people and churches. And the Catholic Church, if, you, if you've ever seen a TV show where they show the, the royals in their castles and stuff, and you see over in the corner there's 15, 20 candles, and over here in this corner is 15, 20 candles, and they don't burn all day long. They burn, burn down, they have to be replaced. So they probably had a whole team of people that their only job was to keep the, the candles lit. But they got, there's a supply chain must have got screwed up because they, they became very rare. It became so rare that the Catholic Church made a law for all their parishioners that they could not use beeswax candles. The only Catholics that could use beeswax candles were the churches because there was a shortage. I don't know how long that went on. It sounded like a good story. I, I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, rush lights, and I'll just say this really quickly. The rush plant, and I'm not familiar with that, but you take the stem of a rush plant and you dip it in whale blubber or tallow or, or animal fat or something, and then you light it, and it'll burn just like a candle, but all it is is a wick. It's a wick that burns real slow. I thought that was a neat story. Okay, the Romans got get credit for the first uh, pe uh, people to use wicks. Um, I'm sure it went way back before that, but they, they're getting credit for it. Then came paraffin. It was just whale's blubber, animal fat, stuff like that, That's a, that the poorer and middle class people could use for candles. And then paraffin came along, and it was very inexpensive. So everybody started using paraffin. You probably have some paraffin candles in your house, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And again, you can find them in all different kind of scents that smell good and, and uh, uh, different colors. But then the light bulb was invented. That was the death of the candle making. Okay, it took a long time for everybody to afford to have, have uh, light bulbs in their house. But guess what? That did away with the candle industry almost. So now, just like today, they're for decorations and, and parties and just, you know, you probably got candles in your houses and stuff. It's a, it's a big industry, but it's not as big as it used to be. And a good friend of mine owned that candle factory in Mayfield. But they, 
they were all in jars. She started in her kitchen, and they were all in jars, which is really safe. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. Okay, what are the advantages of uh, beeswax candles over whale blubber or paraffin and any other kind of candle? The light, the light is not harsh. It's kind of romantic light. It's just very pleasing light. A lot better than paraffin and other types of candles. Beeswax candles don't drip. Well, yeah, they do a little bit, especially if you're moving them around and stuff. But the other candles, they all drip and they all make a mess. And you've got to allow for that when you're going to burn those candles because they're going to drip all over the place. Soot and smell, can you imagine what whale blubber was like? So, but the only smell you get out of beeswax candle is smell of beeswax, which to most people it's very pleasing. Now, this is really important, melting point. It is the highest melting point of any other candle. And why is that important? It burns a lot slower and lasts a lot longer. Okay, how do, we, how do we get beeswax? Where does it come from? You know, it's at the grocery store. No. Okay, this is a little bit of a long story, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. Okay. What, what was that? I missed it. <laughs> Believe it or not, Amazon, right here. The rest of this came from, from the Better Bee, but this was Amazon. I was in a big hurry. I got ready to do this show, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of wax. So, yeah, Amazon. And these are kind of neat. This is what came in. Pass that around. Pass that back. And don't steal it. I think it costs like 20 cents or something. <laughs> Okay, beeswax comes from bees. How do the bees make beeswax? Well, they make it out of honey. They turn some bees, we'll talk about that, can take honey and make wax out of it. In order to make 16 ounces of honey, one pound of honey, you take 1,100 bees, they'll travel 112,000 miles, and visit 4.5 million flowers to make one pound of honey. That's why it was so expensive. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a big deal. It takes eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. So you might multiply those numbers I told you by eight just to make one pound of wax. Do all the bees make wax? Yes, they do, but they only do it a short period of time during their life. And if you want to, this, this, this shows uh, bees living about 45 to 50 days. That's all they live, 45 to 50 days. They know what their job is from the day they're born. The first five days, they take care of this. The next six days, they do this. The next 10 days, they do this. Every bee does that, and every bee does it exactly in that order. Between the 15th day, I mean the 12th day and the 17th day of their life, they are able to change honey to, to wax. They can't do it their whole life, just that short period of time. Okay. Where does it come from? They make that wax, but how do we get it? The main way we get it, I hope it is anyway, you can slaughter the bees and take all their wax. I'm sure that has been done. I hope not very much. But the beekeeper, yeah, better behave, right? <laughs> the beekeeper, when he takes his honey, he takes the frame. He, this is a, a, a big frame. They make they be smaller frames is where the beekeeper the takes the honey. It's full of, of honey. The bees put the nectar inside these little octagon cells that are all perfectly exactly the same. I don't know how in the heck that happens either. They put their nectar in there and they wait for to, the water to evaporate out of that until it gets to the consistency of honey. When that happens, they, they cap it with wax, wax cap. The beekeeper gets this. 
He's got all this honey in there, but there's wax caps on all these cells. So he takes a hot knife, usually hot, sometimes just a regular knife, or there's machinery that does it nowadays. But if you're just like me and you only got a few hives, you probably are going to just cut the caps off. You take that knife and you just slide it along there and you, and you cut those caps off. They fall down in a container down here with the wax and a little bit of honey. You heat that, the wax melts again, the honey's heavier, it goes to the bottom, the wax goes to the top. So when you, you let it cool off, you can pop that wax off the top and you got some honey and you clean that little bit of honey off that wax, you remelt it, you pour it in your molds. That's how it works. That's why it's exp they're expensive. <laughs> Any questions on that? And you missed the beekeeping program we had in March, but the bees are extremely smart. They can communicate. Well, I'm not going to go much farther than that. Now, we get going here. Uh, Better Bee Catalog. You don't need a catalog anymore. You just Google Better Bee, and they'll bring it up, and you can buy all this stuff. It's not very expensive, believe it or not. These, this is, these are six inch tapers, eight inch tapers, 10 inch tapers, and a 12 inch taper. And these, these are not exactly the same. They're, they've got little variations on the, you'll see that later on in the program. They're not exactly the same. They're not that expensive. The wicks, not that expensive. You don't have to buy all this at once. You know, I really like this. Um, if you don't have that, you've got to kind of make your own deal. Uh, so that might be one of the first things that I would buy. Um, okay, internet, Amazon, uh, Yahoo, and all those different, Google will tell you exactly where to get all this stuff. Uh, but I would, if you would, please visit the local stores first. The Bee Barn is about a mile outside of Lone Oak on Clinton Road. Some of you know where we were talking about that. Uh, Chuck's got some, some stuff there. He's got that wax over there, and he can, if he doesn't have it, he can probably get it for you. Uh, local hobby stores, craft stores around town, uh, even in Bent, at Benton, they might even have some. Uh, visit those places first. If they don't have it, then go to Better Be or Amazon or one of these. Okay, when you're getting started, do you want to pour wax? or you want to roll. And some of these people that roll candles can really get fancy, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Little bit. Uh, you got to make a decision what do you want, what, which way you want to go. Melting wax, I've got a little burner over here that I use for that metal thing. Before that, I really like these. These are measuring cups. They've got the spout. You've got to have a spout. But the only thing with, wrong with this, and by the way, this is that bleached See how pretty the white is? Thing is, you got to keep punching the microwave. You can't put this on the stove. It'll explode. I know. <laughs> so you, keep, you have to keep punching that. I put that thing over there. On there, when I came in, put it on real low heat, and then forgot about it. It's kind of nice. OK. So how are you going to melt the wax? Safety. I don't know what the temperature on this stuff is, but it's extremely high. And if I spilled it on myself, which I came close a couple times over here, you can't run to the bathroom and put your hand under cold water. That's not going to fix it. It'll make it better, but that wax, as soon as you put cold water, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into wax on your finger and be still burning. So it's not like just to burn your finger on the stove and you put it under cold water. So you want to be very careful. Don't do it around small children or if you've got a big dog, don't make sure he's outside. Uh, so you want to be very safe. This is the little burner I use. And this, this uh, silicone mold spray, always want to put the silicone mold spray in the molds before you put the wax in. We didn't do that, did we? <laughs> we didn't do that. So luckily, these are rubber. So we'll, we're going to see how good it does without that. 
with the rubber, if you have metal molds, you better use it every time because you will not have any metal molds. That'll be the last time you use a metal mold. These are rubber, and I can squeeze them and do all that kind of stuff, so I think we're safe. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've said, be sure and put that in there. Be sure and put that in there. And you guys distracted me. It's your fault, not mine. Uh, okay, let's talk about wicks for a second. Uh, now I'm worried about the dadgum candles. <laughs> uh, wicks. Uh, you want 100% cotton wicks, square woven. Okay, and they come in all different sizes. Uh, they say a number four is good for everything from three inches in, but that's pretty big for a for a taper. A taper can you can use maybe a one or a two on tapers. Okay, and I've I've seen where they use like three three uh, uh, wicks in one candle. I've never had any luck with that burning all the way down really well with three, three wicks. Uh, the way that you know that you've got the right size wick, if, if it's smoking, you've got too big a wick. You don't, and you, if, you, if you are melting just a little hole in the middle of the candle, you've got too small of a wick, okay? You want to, the, the wax should melt all the way out to the edge, even if, no matter if it's in one of these, or in those, when the, when it's, as it's melting, it shouldn't melt a, a, a hole in the middle. It should melt the whole thing. Okay. Uh, the wax sheets. We're going to get into this, and everybody's got one. I, no, you haven't got any yet. <laughs> I've got enough for 100 people, so I think we're safe. We're going to pass these out in a little bit. This is what the beekeeper uses in what he calls a small super to harvest honey that has the, the comb still in it. It's in the jar, it's got the wax comb and the honey. See, there's no metal in there. If, if he's just gonna take the honey, this would all be reinforced with, with metal wire. So you can get these sheets. This, these are small or inexpensive. <laughs> they only cost about a dollar a piece. Uh, the most of them you want to get by the other stores are going to be bigger. You're probably not going to. Thank you. She's prepared. <laughs> this is the sheet size that you will probably buy at a better B or a craft store or whatever. It's just about twice as big, it makes a lot bigger candle. And she's got. Yeah, she's got pink and, and, and green and blue. You can get all different kind of colors. Uh, I don't think you can put a scent in there, but maybe you can. You can spray it in there maybe. Okay. So if you want wax sheets, you can get all different kinds and they're not very expensive. Um, Better B has them in all different colors. Uh, what kind of melting, melting pot do you want? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is some equipment. I'll use this so I can explain a lot of it. If you see that long thing up there, that's a, what they call a wicking needle. Just pass that around and please s send these back to me. <laughs> uh, it, the wicking needle, they've got a, 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 an eyelet where the wick goes in that eyelet. And then the other end has a pointed end on it. And you take these rubber ones and you stick that needle up through that all the way up and you pull it through and it pulls the, the wick with it, okay? And then, from then on, you don't need a wick any, anymore. You want, you see this? This, I can make a thousand candles with that. Hey, I'm surprised those made it back. <laughs> when I pull this out, this wick We'll go with the candle, and it'll come on up, and I'll cut the candle off, and the wick will be right there, and I'll reattach it, and we're ready to go again, just like that. So we've got all these wicks back here, so we don't have to wick, uh, use that needle every time. Just use it initially <clears throat> the first time, and that's usually about it. Okay, on top of that, it says 100% natural beeswax. Uh, here it is. 
I could be wrong. This is like a shredded cheese. It, it melts really quickly. It's a lot more expensive. <laughs> so I'm, I, I bought this just to show. Well, I wanted to try it also. Um, do you see the different wicks? Uh, down in the bottom here, that little square with the little, little straight pins. I love those little straight pins for the, for the tapers. And then you've got the needle nose pliers right there. That's handy, really handy. handy. You're not going to pull that candle out of there. If you do, the wick ain't going to come with it. So you pull the wick. You grab a hold of the wick and you pull it out, and the candle comes with the wick. Pull the wick, not the candle. And again, I think we've already talked about these little things here that you stick in the bottom. Let's see. Uh, that's, that's it. Okay, pouring or rolling, preparing the molds. We prepared the molds. No, we didn't. We didn't prepare the molds. Uh, finishing the candles, and now we're going to get into rolling techniques. So I'm going to let these stay in here a little bit longer. I'll make sure they're really done really well before we try to pull them out, because if, if they're not, and you try to get them out of there, sometimes they'll bend. They usually won't break, but they'll bend. If you get a candle that's this tall and it's snaked up. Okay, and that's, that's me pulling out one of those white candles with the wick. Uh, I'm glad I had that in case we don't get to pull any of these out. <laughs> okay, uh, that's what you're going to get, and you want to pass those out, can you? Anybody else want to? Virginia, would you come over and help us too? Okay, th this is the first thing you want to do is when you decide what kind of candle, what size candle you want to make, you want to get that wick in there straight, like this one's not. Make sure it's straight and fold that over and smash it a little bit to keep that, that wick straight. That's the first step. And then when you start to roll it, huh, I had one I rolled right here. Oh, here it is. This is how big that candle is going to be if you just roll it up like that. Okay? And if you, yes? Do you buy a mold and melt the wax to make the sheets? Or is the, how do you get the sheets? That went through a factory that, that melts the wax and, and makes those like that. This is how big it's going to be. If you had one of her sheets, it would be a little bit taller. If it... If you cut this in half, if you, cut, if you cut this in half, and then you roll it, and then attach the second half to, the, to, the, to that, it'll come out that big. It'll be really small, like an, a volt of. And then if you take scissors and you cut it at an angle, you can get it to, to be like those two little ones right there. Those are cute. Those are cute. Okay. So you can either roll it like this, or you can just, if you wanted to, you don't have to cut it at an angle and do that. And who, else, who in here has done this before? Are there, could you share any other techniques with, the, with our? Um, I mean, when rolling, sometimes I have my hair dryer next to me in case it's too warm, I can kind of look around the sheet a little bit. That's a great idea, you can, because once you start rolling, the key is you better roll it tight. You want to roll it as tight as you can. If you mess up and you don't roll it as tight as you can, un unroll it. You can unroll it and unroll it, and then roll it again really tight, really tight.
warnings about burning candles. Do not leave a candle unattended. Do not put, burn a candle by your bedside and then fall asleep, because you will. Don't burn candles by the bed. Children and pets, don't burn them by small children. And you say, well, my cat never gets up on the coffee table. Well, if you have a candle up there, he's going to check that candle out. Uh, drafts and wind, be careful around drafts and wind. If you're taking them outside, surely you don't have drafts in your house very bad. But if you go outside and extinguish properly. And I didn't know that was a problem, but the book said it was. Uh, people, they just go over and sniff it, and they leave, and the candle relights. So make sure you get that candle out before you leave it. And back to the beekeepers. If it wasn't for the beekeepers, there wouldn't be any bees. I don't know if you knew that or not. Bees don't make it in the wild anymore. There's the, they have a, two really bad mites that take care of them. You got the winter kill, you have the foul brood and the different diseases, and they usually don't pick a good place to go when they, when they swarm. Usually they'll go someplace and get in, get in your wall of your house or in a tree or something that's not a very good place. They may live one or two years. There are exceptions. I've seen some where they really found a good place. So bees don't, honeybee, honeybees, not the other bees, but the honeybees don't not live in the wild anymore, more than a year or two. The only honeybees we have are the honeybees that the beekeeper has. And they have a bunch. And I don't want to get into why the, 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 the colonies, uh, uh, people lost their, all their colonies because they, the, there were no bees. It's the neonicotinoids. It's a, um, it's a herbicide that Bear and some other people put out that makes insects lose their memory. They're illegal in Europe. They will never be illegal in the United States. They have too big a lobby. We'll never get rid of them. Maryland is the only state that, w that outlawed them. Neonicotinoids. Okay, but the beekeepers lose all these hives. They make new ones. Every year they make a bunch of new ones. So the beekeepers are doing fine. Even though they lose a bunch, they replace them. Okay, so there wouldn't be any bees, honey bees, without the beekeepers. So we need to really, I don't know why they don't do more for the beekeepers. Uh, and why is that important? The bees, not only do they make the candle wax and stuff, but they are responsible for one third of all the food that's produced in the world. One third. What would happen if you lost one third of all the food in the world? You go to Walmart to buy a can of corn, it'd be $25. Yes, so maybe the humans might be in big trouble if we lost the honeybees. And the only reason we have honeybees is the beekeepers. I'm a beekeeper. <laughs> I've got one hive now. I've had, used to have a bunch, but I live in town. I live right in town. And my neighbor said, yes, you can have one hive if you share all the honey with us. So I've got one. Okay, any other questions? God, this is... Ah. I think if I put these in a the freezer, maybe that'll help. This has never happened to me before. Yeah, this, this spray, if I'd have put that spray in there, they'd have popped right out. And I, I will get them out of there. There you are. That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I'm going to try some of these other ones. So that's, that's the show for tonight, I guess. Thank you for tuning in, in person, on Zoom, TV, and YouTube. This is Master Gardening. Until next time, good gardening.